Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 55th episode of Vision Con Live, your go-to nerdy talk show. I'm your host, Zach Wilson, but you didn't come here to see me today. You came to meet the woman of the hour. She's Poison Ivy from Batman, Sniper Wolf from the Metal Gear Solid series, Maria Mino from Ozzy and Drix, just to name a few. She may play femme fatales on camera, but she's one of the sweetest people in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the one, the only, Tasia Falenza. Tasia, how are we doing today? Woo! That was an incredible introduction, Zach. I was gonna, uh, I was gonna say, like, in terms of enthusiasm and putting it out there, that's like a ten out of ten for give great voice. So thank you so much. I appreciate that, but it's not every day you get to meet and interview one of your heroes. So I'm kind of on cloud nine right now. I feel like I could fight a bear. Well, thank you very much, and I take it in the greatest esteem uh, because, uh, you know, I've. I, we don't know how appreciated we are often as voiceover actors until we get to meet the fans because we're doing it in isolation or, you know, I, even with, with a sniper, sniper wolf, I didn't even know, I didn't even see the famous death scene until it was on YouTube because I never played the game. Really? So that was something that was, until I was on Twitter and people mm. started tweeting David Hayter, one of my dear friends who played Snake. Um, when I came onto Twitter, he, he basically did a, uh, you know, homage to like, people, my friend, AKA Sniper Wolf is on Twitter. And I went from like, you know, 60 uh, followers to like 400 in an hour. And it was one of those wonderful, like, oh, this is what social media is. <laughs> but then people were kind enough to share the, um, the, uh, the YouTube video with me. So I, I'm always delighted when I get a chance to express myself and also meet fans because it makes me feel great that you know something that i do is appreciated so thank you well our, us metal gear fans we're, we're a pretty rabid bunch yes and we I, I i we were blessed enough to have our like 25th i don't know 23rd uh, uh we came together for our zoom uh, a reunion of sorts so that was really fun and got to be with the fans and connect with each other as uh, voiceover artists and friends. So that's been really, and the fans are amazing for Metal Gear Solid. They really are truly. And hopefully, who knows, you know, they're, uh, Jordan Vote Roberts is trying to, to create, oh, there's one of my, my other dogs. Uh, <laughs> there he trying is. to create uh, an animated series or, and I know he's trying to do a real life movie. So all kinds of cool things going on. <laughs> well, we'll keep our fingers crossed and tuning in for that. But to start us off, Tasia, you are part of a bunch of fandoms over the years. You have a long list. If you just look at the IMDb page, you'll know that you have a long list of characters over the years. But what I want to get it started with is how did we get here? Was show business always the plan? Or did something happen kind of later on in life that brought you to where we are today? Great question. My dog is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it goes. Um, you know what? I kind of... My, both my parents were actors. I kind of was, came out of the womb singing, I gotta be me. So I, I definitely knew I wasn't going to be a scientist or a lawyer or I really loved acting. <laughs> Hold on, my, I gotta tell my husband. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> he get, I know, he's giving a great bark. Um, but I knew I loved acting and I wanted to do it. I'm just gonna tell my husband. Hey, no worries. quiet, <laughs> quiet. This is life, this is real life. Isn't this awesome? I'm digging it. <laughs> Hold on, he's on the Hey, honey, can you make sure the dog is quiet while I'm doing my Zoom thing? <laughs> Thank you. Love that man. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. So, so I knew I was going to do it, and I was lucky enough to be discovered at the age of 15 for a movie where I was literally one day i'd always got the school and the camp plays one day i was doing the uh, lead in a school play and was discovered by a director named louis mal who was a very very famous french director at the time who had made um a movie called pretty baby with brooke shields and and i was discovered one of those crazy situations right time my an open call in backstage which is a, was the newspaper my mom went for the open call brought my picture they wrote the wrong age she showed them like my picture and then I was down there an hour later auditioning. And then the casting director who cast all of Woody Allen's films said, you're okay, great. You're wonderful. We're flying you to Hollywood tomorrow, pack for six weeks and otherwise you'll be back the next day. And so uh, I was asking who my leading man was and uh, I thought hopefully it was like, you know, an eighties like idol, like Scott Bayo at the time he was huge and found out it was, um, 
Sean Penn, who was Spicoli to me from Ridgemont High, and was kind of thinking, well, I'm definitely going to have to be a good actress for this one. <laughs> Throw me in the deep end. Yeah, to be like in love with Spicoli. Uh, but uh, so anyway, that was pretty exciting in terms of a, a teenage life. I, I, I was whisked off six weeks in uh, San Francisco and came back. Um, and three months later, I was on All My Children, which was a huge soap opera. So kind of that was the trajectory. And then did on-camera acting and found my way to voiceover because honestly, uh, I really found as an on-camera actress, and I'm sure a lot of actors can agree, that we can have the most incredible talents to offer. But if you don't look exactly like someone has in your mind the picture, your talent is like the 20, 30, 40% and, and what you look like. And so I found myself so often being told I was the best actor for the job, but you weren't thin enough or blonde enough or tall enough or all the enoughs that we're so often faced with. Uh, and when I discovered voice acting, again, my mom was the one who pushed me to do it. And I was all of a sudden un leashed all of a sudden I was like wow I'm able to do this role and that role and this role and that role and nobody's telling me anymore mm, we just don't see you that way it all became about the lips <laughs> and so this is what uh, became uh, my passion and I've been doing it ever since 25 years plus and it's just something I love and I'm grateful for every day and now I get to teach it and share about it and continue to do it so that's a very long answer but knew that I was destined to do it. Oh, well, a lot of that is what we're going to touch on, you know, the teaching, mentoring, and the characters. And now, like you said, over 25 years, if we digested every single character, we'd be here all evening. But there were three of them that I definitely wanted to touch on. The first one being, and I mentioned femme fatales at the beginning, and I would say you would be hard pressed to find a bigger femme fatale in recent pop culture memory than the one the only Poison Ivy. Now, before we dive too much deeper into Poison Ivy, just give us a brief overview of the character, maybe how you got the part, any fun anecdotes involved, anything at all. Sure. Well, you know, again, I, I do love her so much. I mean, I, I have my homage to her. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I love to keep my nature close to me. Um, and she was just one of those, I was lucky enough, right place, right time. Uh, when I saw the breakdown for her, I really connected to that she's really multidimensional and that, you know, she's not a one note character. And I love playing strong women characters that, you know, are, are perfectly imperfect, shall we say, right? Because none of us are perfect. And so... Mm -hmm. Maybe because I connected to the fact that she's very powerful and strong, but also at the same time, very seductive, <laughs> uh, which I connect to. <laughs> it just was a, the, a, a good blend, and I was fortunate enough to get her. And when I um, when I booked the part again, I didn't. I I, I was very aware of the, the DC world, but I wasn't as connected on the you know again daily basis about it i mean i grew up with i had seen uma thurman play her and i thought she was fantastic uh so it was really again the fans that once and once i was i had been cast that i and i didn't know that arkham um you know the asylum would be a three-part game right it was so popular so it's one of those things that you, you you always go into it with the acting of like i'm gonna just do my best sometimes like when i got to be a Vulcan on Star Trek or a Jedi in Star Wars. Like you're like, oh my goodness, I get to be part of this legacy. And yes, of course, to be, be, be part of the Batman legacy. It's always very cool. But af afterwards to know what a success Arkham ha has been and then to be part of that legacy, it's only grown. And then I've gotten to play these other iterations of her, even a Lego version. So I, <laughs> and also, you know, again, as the awareness of our ecosystem and what she represents, has become much greater. I think I've, my love for her and my respect for her has grown all the more, especially with Arkham Knight, where she really was a shero. And I won't, you know, give any more away, but yeah. that that's so impactful to me to be able to play somebody who's considered one thing, but really, you know what? At the end of the day, she's far more. Yeah. Ooh, and shero. That's my new favorite word. <laughs> shero. Well, and so. And you kind of touched on it a little bit, but while definitely being a famous femme fatale, arguably one of the more 
famous ones in pop culture. She's also very, you know, multidimensional, is very passionate about her ideals and protecting the plant life of, you know, Gotham or really the world, you know, albeit to kind of a dangerous degree. Oh, but while playing Poison Ivy, was there ever a point where you kind of began to relate to her strong convictions and personality, maybe even not on a personal level? I would say again, my awareness of at being a mother myself to three children and wanting to have a planet for them <laughs> <laughs> that will not, you know, uh, be destroyed definitely has made me more aware of what her mission is. Now, would I pursue uh, her, her means of <laughs> No, but... Um, but definitely, I've, un, I've the more I connect to nature, like I uh, have come to understand earthing and grounding, which is literally when you touch the earth with your feet, that you benefit from, from the negative ions and because we're covered by electromagnetic energy, which is really bad for us. So, you know, we used to laugh at tree huggers. They, they knew what they were talking about. I believe all nature, I mean, the studies that plants feel that they have responses I absolutely agree 100%. And the more I study it, the more I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated with the fact that Mother Nature does everything right, and we just mess it up as humans. <laughs> so all I'm really, I'm really aligned with her that if we don't uh, protect Mother Nature, it's very clear that we, we as humans will not survive. So yes, I, the more knowledgeable, and because I am now a mother, literally. Um, I really care more than ever that my children benefit. So I'm all about what she's doing. Her means are a little extreme. <laughs> That's but really I, <laughs> I certainly respond and love her mission, you know, as opposed to another character where I'm like, uh, like Sniper Wolf, you know, I just can't get behind <laughs> that, that particular uh, version. But I mean, they all have frailties. I love Sniper Wolf too. But again, you know, this one I could really wrap my brain around. Uh, her story because I'm much more in line with where she is right now as a mother uh, versus you know that character which was just she she was looking almost for a death wish so that's a you know it's a whole nother you know whole other avenue exactly but before we move on guys uh for those of you that are in the chat right now and just watching this live on facebook for those of you who've watched the show a lot know that at the very end we go to viewers comments and questions but those of us that are joining us for the first time first off welcome but also if you guys want you can either put your viewers comments and questions either in the live chat or message vision con directly and then at the very end we'll read you guys as what live on the air but with that said, I want to go to our to next. Questions. I want to go to our next character, who is also another very powerful and impactful female character, and that, of course, you know, can be summed up by no better than the one, the only, Sniper Wolf. Woohoo! Right. Here we All are. Right. Now, again, before we dive deeper into Sniper Wolf, just give us a brief overview about everybody's favorite sniper. Maybe how you got the part. Any fun, you know, anecdotes? Anything at all? Sure. Um, well, she was again, uh, she was one of my earlier, I think before I had done her, I'd really done more of the simplistic games like uh, Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> 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 That's going way back. I don't know if anyone played those games, but Annette Boning. Oh. Uh, and so this was really one of my first roles where it was, it really felt like I was doing an acting, uh, you know, I was cinematically like I was on camera because she was, it was such a heavy scene and the scenes were, you know, very um, realistic, the acting, it wasn't just the silly. Uh, so that was something that I was definitely taken with. And also uh, the first one, uh, we did not know again how successful it would be. I had no idea how successful it was until my friend David Hayter said, hey, they want to redo this for PlayStation and we're um, renegotiating it. Uh, and by the way, did you know it's made millions and millions of dollars and, and uh, they're still, you know, uh, trying to trying to make it seem like it's a small game, but, but I know for sure that it's not. Uh, so that was really interesting because again, I wasn't on social media at the time, so I had no idea what a phenom it, it would become. And David Hayter, who was one of the most lovely, generous you know, people, in the meantime, from the time that he first did the first one, 
he ended up becoming the writer for X-Men. And wow. so when they asked him to, yeah, so he went from actor to writer for X-Men, which was a story in and of itself. But he, so when they asked him to do it again, to reprise it, he was in a position where he could say, I will love to, but for this price. <laughs> And he said, and by the way, the other like, you know, five main characters, uh, you have to like give them a bump up as well. So I would have to say that he was my hero in that regard because he took his success and um, said, you know, let's have some love for these, these other actors. And he was in this totally different position. And so I, I, I give him great praise and appreciation that he not only was did it for himself, but his generous. And so every time we, we work together, I'm always like, Dave, you're the best. You are the best. And he's, you know, he's, he's so much, I mean, he's a, he's a director, he's a writer. So I give him all the credit and the fact that we, we are still in line and aligned together mm -hmm. uh, makes me very happy. Oh, man. Well, a great guy to be sure amazing and and so talented and here we are you know in a position where hopefully we'll all be able to come back together and reprise this role so it comes back to you know you do the acting i it was he knew it was going to be a huge success he was much more into games at the time so he knew that it was different that konami and the, the whole you know the the cinematic and the storyline and the depth of it i was still kind of just like <laughs> Seems like a cool role and, you know, and uh, it felt good and like, okay, next thing, you know, and then find out later, like, oh, people like it. Oh, cool. <laughs> this, this monumental franchise. And I mean, yeah, like Metal Gear is revered for a plethora of reasons, but, you know, one of which, a very important one, in my opinion, is mm -hmm. the fact that it was one of the first kind of video game companies to really promote strong female characters, because especially, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, kind of women in the industry, like female characters were often kind of shoved into the damsel in distress archetype where Metal Gear definitely broke that mold and definitely with Sniper Wolf being, you know, one of the key figureheads for that, she's definitely yeah. not a damsel in distress and Nude. a legitimate threat. <laughs> and I hesitate calling her a villain because she's definitely not a traditional villain in that respect. Right. But so definitely still, you know, technically an antagonist. Was there ever kind of anything about Sniper Wolf and her story that you kind of found inspiring while playing her? Oh, for sure. Because, because of her storyline, because you find out that she doesn't do this just for kicks. I mean, she's, she, once you understand, at first she seems rather a little too like, you know, she's like a Bond character. She seems to love the kill, right? You know, and then you find out that she was a survivalist. I mean, this is how she survived. And she was, she was, you know, and, and, and the fact that there are, that it was based on truth and the Kurds are in that situation uh, and were in that situation and that this was something taken from real life and battle scarred. Uh, I really had empathy for her. Uh, and I think that's why she was beloved, even though she was, you know, a killer, a cold-blooded killer. And she wasn't, you know, she even again, she spared Meryl's life. I mean, she she was this killer, but she became so because she literally was raised to survive and lost her childhood and um, hardened in order to exist. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I definitely have compassion for the characters that I get to play because, you know, so often people, you know, don't, they, they, villains don't think of themselves as villains. They have a righteousness about it. Now, sometimes it's just too skewed where it's like, uh, there's no excuse. Uh, and, but at the same time, if you can get into where they come from, you can convey that empathy, that empathy through them. And that's what makes her where people, knew that she was bad they hated killing her they hated being killed by her but they <laughs> they, they they loved her in a way so i think that's what, as humans that we when we can get into the heart of why people do what they do whether or not you agree with them or not we can at least understand them and that was something that i felt uh, that she really that was the, the brilliant writing and the music and everything else was brought that scene up where, like i cried watching it i i cried being an observer to like this this character and her ex experience being completely separated, even though I played her. 
<laughs> because I, you know, I experienced her, her pain in the moment when I was doing it, I just really, I gave up to it. But when I watched, I feel like, oh, that's why she's so revered and memorable because that scene with everything that they added, all the elements, I love the thing that it's just my acting, but it's the compilation of it all. And then the actor only gets to say what the writer, you know, gives them. So that's what made it so special. Well, and I mean, like my parents growing up were never very s stringent on uh, the rating systems of video games. So like, I, had to, <laughs> I had to have been like, the original Metal Gear Solid was my first M rated game. And I had to have been like nine years old. And I was just bawling my little nine-year-old eyes out when she eventually died. And I don't know, it was just something I guess, you know, you never really recover from. Because, I mean, yes, it's a compilation of things, but just like your performance is just so incredible. And it, the only thing I can think of about Sniper Wolf is, uh, to put it in very much layman's terms, in the original Wreck-It Ralph movie, uh, so there's a line in it that I always remember, is uh, you might be a, I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but just because you're a bad guy doesn't mean you're a, bad guy and so I, I feel like that just you know about just her in a layman's terms very well yes i agree i mean you you can't justify what she does but you can understand it yeah. you can understand from her background her her what, what she thought she had to do you know you do things that uh are morally reprehensible but you you in your mind think that this is what you have to do in order to survive and at the end you know she says I was looking to have someone like you I thought I was looking to kill but I was looking for you to take basically and my pain and my pain well a total tone shift guys so please okay because that's heavy it is <laughs> but in a different way this is kind of heavy but guys I am here my name is Zach Wilson I am here to write a Ron that the universe has inflicted upon us there okay. is a show there was a show that was criminally cut short that I choose to put a spotlight on right now. The show is called Ozzy and Drix. Love that. You show. played Maria Mino, the ever lovable but also badass woman. So it badass. would it would please me greatly if you just start us off telling us a brief overview of the character, how you got the part, any fun anecdotes, and let's give this the show or let's give this show the spotlight it so desperately deserved. I love that show and it totally, and you know the reason why it didn't, it was so fun. It was, uh, you know, based on Osmosis Jones and it was all about the inner life, literally the inner life of a 12 year old, what's going on in his body. And it was so creative uh, and I loved it. And we did two seasons and the only reason it didn't continue was because of the merchandising. They didn't sell enough of the character. They couldn't figure out how to sell the characters. So that's one of those sad little behind the scenes where you're like, really? The show was successful. The show was loved, but the merchandising wasn't making enough for it. And Maria Amino, as in she's an amino acid, but she's also a cop. Um, <laughs> uh, she was super, super, super cool. And she, uh, she was feistier than all get out. And I loved playing her because she was, she was again, has a heart of gold, but a badass, a cop, <laughs> and happens to be inside of a body of a 12 year old as an amino acid. Mm -hmm. And then, so the thing that kills me is, uh, well, the thing that makes it kind of bittersweet is it's an amazing show. And everybody that I know that is connected to it, like for instance, um, Justin Cowden, who actually was on episode three of this show, who oh, was Hector, Hector, you know, the child in the yeah. show, like loved the show desperately as well. And it was such a great show that was criminally cut short. But it was in so educational, it was yeah. so fun. It was such a great way to explain the human body in a very cool way as opposed to like, um, you know, rah, 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 this is this, this is that, you know? I'll go so far as to say that there was a brief moment in my life where didn't wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. So I decided, hey, let's, I'll just become a nursing major. That lasted a whole three weeks. And I, would, <laughs> I would argue that this show taught me more about the human body than those three weeks at a collegiate level class did. But, what, what, um, did what did Kevin say? Oh. Uh, what's up? Oh, 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 you were saying about, um, oh, who played, uh, you were talking to. Oh, oh Justin, that he yeah, uh, Justin. played Hector, yeah, yeah. But no, what I was going to say is, since the show was criminally cut short, a lot of characters were, you know, definitely didn't get to be as fleshed out and their story didn't get to progress as it was probably originally intended. So since you played Maria, 
in your own opinion or words, how do you wish, if the store hat story and show had evolved and progressed, how would you have liked Maria's story to have evolved and maybe have gotten to? Oh, you're so cute to even ask a so <laughs> wonderful question like Maria. Well, you know what, she was, she was, she was feisty and she was always trying to right the wrongs, you know, and she was also, uh, I would have liked to have seen her get married maybe, you know, like a, a back life uh, to, to um, either Ozzy uh, or, or, you know, have some kind of experience uh, where she gets to like, again, like make little aminos and <laughs> <laughs> also continue to be her badass self. Because again, you know, she's strong. She's a strong female character inside of the show and, and showing that women can do anything, you know, female characters, which I think is always a great way to represent that. It was not just like, she was no damsel in distress. She was out there doing her thing. So anything that represents a, a strong female where you get to be feminine and the masculine of the energy, I love playing. And it's also, it was a great way for her to, to um, get, you know, young people to like really respect their bodies. So I would have loved to have seen her continue to be badass. Maybe she becomes a, you know, the captain and she, uh, she continues to right the wrongs in Hector's body, but at the same time, you know, gets married and, and uh, has her own little amino acids <laughs> <laughs> to show work-life balance. What can I, I say? That would, be, that would be my wish for a Maria if she had continued. Guys, I highly recommend the show. Again, it was criminally cut short, but I'd love to bleed, to not bleed, breathe some more life into it. So go check it out. How can people see it? Uh, is there a way to stream it right now? I, oh, I want to say it is now, I, I don't condone. I do not condone any illegal streaming. Um, I can't stop you, but I want to say if you just put it in Google, I'm sure one of the millions of legal streaming sites have it. And so, again, guys, Great. I implore you guys to check it out. Yeah, but, uh, it too. and, and, and uh, Phil Lamar, I mean, brilliant, yeah. brilliant, bit, brilliant, uh, you know, playing Ozzy, and he's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, some really great acting in there, and a lot of guests, a lot of guest stars that you would probably have interviewed already. So, yeah. definitely, definitely worth checking out. Oh, that's a great show. But kind of moving off from the character aspect, because you were a very accomplished actress and voice actress, but you are also a very accomplished mentor as well. So I did want to talk about some of your coaching services and mentoring services for the folks watching at home that might either, that might fit into one of two demographics. Either A, they want to get into, you know, the voice acting uh, industry and just don't know really how to start, or they already are and just want to know where to, what they can do next to kind of level up their skills. So, you know, sure. so I would just like, you know, for the folks watching at home, why don't you just tell them what services you provide, how can they get in contact with you to take advantage of those services and anything else? Sure. Well, my whole platform is to give great voice, which is the gift of being able to use our brilliant instruments to be able to express ourselves and the animation. And, and, and I love thinking about voiceover is that there's so many genres to dip your lip in, I like to say, whether it's commercial or animation. So I teach uh, animation classes, uh, usually once a month between two different schools, uh, Real Voice LA, I just did one this month. And then this upcoming month in March, I'll be doing it through Trailer Voice Artists, trailervoiceartists.com. I have a, a class, I think on the 15th coming up. And then I also teach one-on-one -on -one for those performers, actors, uh, voiceover actors that really wanna dive a little bit deeper. And you know, I focus on the acting, the overall acting skills that uh, is, encompasses how I teach, how I approach it, and then we can dive deeper. So two different ways, you can either take a class or you can study with me privately. And I'm working on an online program that I'll be sharing in the near future where people can learn on their own time frame and just kind of, again, figure it out to, uh, along with how I position it and approach voice acting. Because at the end of the day, voice acting is acting. And what I love about animation, out of all the genres, it really does release our inner child. So my thought is, you know, whether you decide you're gonna be a voiceover actor full time, or you're gonna be a lawyer, or you're gonna be a nurse practitioner, there's always a benefit to having at least one voiceover experience because it just helps you to have more confident communication. 
And in that vein, I did a TEDx talk called Give Great Voice, utilizing my lens as a voiceover actor. So I love to share that as a, a great way to kind of understand the principles and also have fun, you know, seeing how I translate all the skills that I've learned over the last 35 years and help people in their confident communication, whether they're a student or a, a colleague or an employer or an employee, that we all have roles to rock. And if we understand that, we'll converse better and have a better life for that. And for those of us that are watching either live on Facebook or later on YouTube, they can see this on screen. But for our audio listeners, how could they get in contact with you and uh, apply and enroll in your classes? Yes, they can uh, come to TejaValenza.com and I have uh, an email there or email me directly at Tasia at TejaValenza.com, Tasia at TejaValenza, or I'm also on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, those are the two best. I'm on uh, Twitter, but in terms of getting in touch with me, feel free to DM me and I'm more than happy to set up uh, a comp consultation. And in terms of the next class, trailer voice artist, but again, just DM me and I'll, I post all the time when I'm teaching so they can find me that way. And that link as far as many others are in the live chat if you're watching this live on Facebook or if you're either watching this later on YouTube or listening on Spotify, they can be down in the description below guys. And speaking of those links, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not already either message VisionCon directly, your viewers comments and questions, or put them in the live chat. This is your last chance to do so because ladies and gentlemen, we're in the plug zone. <laughs> Asia Valenza, now is your opportunity to plug, promote, advertise, whatever you want to do. Floor is yours. Thank you. Well, uh, there's a few other ways to, uh, I would love to share something that's absolutely, again, a passion, which is I do believe that in order to give great voice in the world, we need to give it to ourselves first. And so I have a free affirmation meditation app that I love to share called Haven Guided Affirmations. And I call that a be kind to your mind app. And some people say that it actually sounds like a, a little like poison ivy in your ear. So if you kind of like poison ivy, um, <laughs> you'll have me in your ear with a very soothing tone uh, it, it, with these lovely masteries called uh, their confidence and health, but it's a lovely guided meditation app. So that's one. Um, I do sign autographs for those that are fans of Metal Gear Solid or Poison Ivy uh, through this company called Streamly. And that's something that you can reach out and check that out. Uh, and I'm happy to, to sign it in if, if anything that you have in your mind that you would like to connect with. So that's a, a wonderful way because it's so hard to, people are always saying, how can I get autographs to you? But you know, with the whole COVID thing, my agency's not even open. So that's, uh, and there's no cons going on. So that's fun. I also do cameos. So feel free if there's a message that I can give to you directly. I'm at cameo at Tasia Valenza there. So these are just all the ways that uh, I can connect with my fans and be of service, but also uh, my passion again is to connect with the fans and give them the benefit of feeling confident in their communication and also mental wellness right now, because it's a bit of a difficult time as you know, and we're all needing a little extra love and comfort. So this is my way of saying, let me give back to people so that they can take care of them, themselves because it's, it's really important right now. Hold on, then. can I? Oh, here it is. All right, I was trying to uh, pull up the uh, Haven guided affirmation for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And that's at the App Store, and and if you like it, please review it. That's a wonderful way to give back. I appreciate that as well. And um, again, with Give Great Voice, the TEDx, I'd love I'd love especially teenagers, schools to have it because it's so difficult with this online learning, but you know, we have to be able to speak and we have to have confidence in our, in our speaking. And so I think it's a really fun way to teach speaking uh, with the lens of, of a voiceover actor and everybody has one, in a, we all want to channel our inner superhero, right? So that's a, a really great way. So those are two like PSAs of how we, I can share and also hope that the fans will uh, spread the love. <laughs> All right, guys, and all of those links, are, if you're watching this live on Facebook, going to be in that live chat. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, going to be down in the description box below, guys. And with that, we are in our final segment 
viewers' comments and questions. So as name of life is going to take some of them from the messenger and then some from the live chat. So let me pull the messenger up real quick and then we will jump right into it. Of course. Right. Okay. So do -do -do. Okay, so the first one's gonna be from Raylene who tuned in and said, what is your favorite scene or moment that you like to record for the Arkham series? Ooh, my favorite scene or moment of the Arkham series. Well, I, I do love the part where, in Arkham Knight, where she really got to express, you know, what, what man has done to nature when she's talking about the tree, the most beautiful, powerful tree that she needs to save. And that she's, you know, basically sharing that she's willing to to sacrifice herself for it. I, I I always love noble characters, and it's one of those ones where, you know, as an actor to be able to to dive into that was pretty um, overwhelming, and and made me feel really connected to this beautiful Shiro, as I said. So. I love it when there's, I mean, I always love the, the, the Tate our take because she always has like a, you know, a funny thing to say. Um, and she's always so tongue in cheek, you know, when she rides with Batman and she comes out of, <laughs> out of this car that's just driven and she's like, well, you know, <laughs> she's, she's just very fun. So I like both. I like it when she's tongue in cheek where she can handle, uh, you know, anything that he throws at her. But at the same time where she's, again, this noble character who's really, getting ready to save Gotham with herself. Oh. Well, Ricardo tuned in and said, if you could do a voiceover for any historical figure in a short series, who would you pick? Oh, that's such a great question. Historical series, oh, wow. Um, I would love to play, uh, gosh, you know what I'm thinking now, like who are my favorite favorite uh, historical series of women that are so can I think about that and get one back to you Absolutely. because I don't want to like I, I really want to be thoughtful about that and my brain is like in like you know it's just going out sure. to lunch because I, I I'm thinking about like who are my favorites and you know in, on the spot you just like it's not sure. in my head. But come back to me on that well, one. Well while we wait on that one Ricardo uh, I'll do an easier one and Caroline really does this one for each episode. Caroline tuned in and said when you're not working what are some of your favorite hobbies? Well I do have these two dogs and they are my I have three beautiful children so I, I schlepping them around are my favorite hobbies because I have to take care of them although they're getting very independent um, the top, the dogs, I take them every day to the park. I do love, um, making meditations, uh, and, and sharing everything about different, uh, aspects about how to give great voice. So that's something that, I, you know, it's like, if I'm not teaching voiceover, I'm teaching about that. So I love that. I do love to paint. I don't get to do it as much as I used to. I painted a lot, um, for one year, but that is something that I just just enjoy. And I really love hiking and being in nature. I really enjoy connecting with nature because I notice, you know, the more connected we are, the more we need to disconnect. So that is something that I really appreciate, just grounding my feet, the sitting out in the sun um, and feeling like I'm, I'm one with nature. So the, there's, there's those things, but you know, with having a 15 month old puppy, you know, there's not much, I, any free time I have is like, hi mom, hi mom, wanna play, wanna play, wanna play, wanna, <laughs> wanna, over. Play, wanna play, wanna play. So that kind of takes up a lot of my time. So Aaron tuned in and said, do you have any favorite Star Wars movies since you did uh, the TV cartoons? I'm gonna go with, an, I, I have to say, I watched the first one, which is the third one when I was like 10 or 12 years old. Um, and I loved that one so much. Uh, that whenever I think about, you know, like, which is my true favorite, I want to go back to, to that one because it was that, you know, the magic of being in the theater and there was nothing ever that I'd even consider before that, you know, uh, so that's my favorite because it's the, it's that childlike wonder. And then the second one is, of course, was amazing. But those first three, got to say I love them the most because they were, <laughs> they were just they were just amazing, right? They were just so special. Yeah, masterpieces. Yes. Yeah, so I was thinking again about uh, 
well, the historical women. Ricardo's, yeah. Yeah, Catherine the Great would be kind of cool. Okay, because like you know, strong, strong woman. <laughs> yeah, I think it's always fun to play a strong woman who, you know, goes through her her trials and tribulations, but is is powerful and and somebody who who changed the world. So um, I think she would be a cool one to wrap my myself around. Well, there you go, Ricardo. Catherine the Great. All right, so we have time for about three more guys. Uh, so Curtis tuned in and said, did you find voice acting comes naturally or do you put an extra effort into each character you play? Oh, a good, a great question. It's kind of both, you know, there's an instinctive, as soon as I, I, I connect to a character, there's a instinctive, like if I really understand her where it literally comes maybe again from, you know, years and years of just connecting to, to characters. But then once I've gotten the initial layer, trying to understand their backstory, try to understand what makes them tick, um, giving a little bit of that, that historical perspective on them is where you have to do the deeper dive and, and try to give them multi-dimensional aspects. So that's something that I have the initial like, oh, I understand her, I really get her. Uh, so, you know, acting comes, but it's like, it comes naturally 25, 35 years later, right? <laughs> so you pay your dues, but giving, giving um, dimensionality and, and, and fleshing out characters, that's where the work becomes a little bit more involved, where you try to find out as much as you can about them so that when you're speaking, uh, you're, you're really channeling them and it's not one dimensional, it's multi-dimensional. You don't want to make a caricature, you want to make a character. <laughs> Well, uh, another one just tuned in. I know we said we would only do three more, but a, a new one came in. But after this, I'm calling last call. But uh, so Zach tuned in, not me. He spells it with an H. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> came in and said, I enjoyed your work with Batman Arkham Games as Poison Ivy. What was the hardest scene to do in Batman Arkham Knight? Oh gosh, the screaming one. When I was literally like connecting to the tree and I had to scream like, as I'm being basically electrocuted, uh, that was tough because we had to do it several times and I, you know, I had to experience to that degree of what that felt like. And so whenever you're channeling for one thing, that kind of energy through you and then having to do it several times, um, that was definitely it because I was feeling the pain of it. And also, you know, it's your, ah, you know, you're yeah. really, <laughs> projecting and not just like a like a you know a hit you're you're being fully electrocuted so i i had to give in to that fully all right so chris tuned in and said what was it like voicing for shock t in the clone wars oh i love shock t because she's so much cooler than i'll ever be <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to be a jedi right i mean there's a oh, yeah. there's that commanding authoritative sound that comes from that force channeling within her so to play her is like again i look up to her and i always feel like if i could just carry a piece of her with me that wisdom it makes me feel like maybe i could be a better cool mom to my kids and not yell at them to pick up their socks but be more like pick up your socks children <laughs> Put some force. Socks, you know, like. <laughs> Put some force to it. I dig it. <laughs> so yeah, I really love her because she's, I love all the roles that I play, whether they're, whether they're more noble than I'll ever be. And I'm like, if I could just like, someone believes that I could play her, maybe a little bit of lives inside of me. Oh. And let's face it, a Jedi is like on the, the coolest end of the spectrum. So I love playing her because she was, again, so noble and willing to sacrifice herself for a greater cause. Well, that perfectly transitions to our final question. That's from Sarah who said, if there's anything you learned from voicing great characters, what would that be? Mm. Voicing great characters is that they all live inside of us. Oh. Yeah, all of that nobility, all of that goodness, all of that courage, it lives inside of us. And so when we can tap into that and just honor it and affirm that we have it, we can be it. So I always love to offer that it lives inside of you that we all have nobility, we all have courage, we all have the, the, something greater than ourselves to live for. And so I, I love to offer it back to, that's why we connect to them, that's why we love them. Because we really know that somehow we have it inside and they give us permission to feel that and, and, and live vicariously through them. 
I mean, that was so beautiful and such a perfect note to end on that I'm not even going to say a funny anecdote. So ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this has been episode 55 of Vision Con Live. Before we sign off, Tasia, any final thoughts or words of wisdom to leave us on? Well, that one felt really good, but yeah, I would, I would yeah. say, um, you know, be really kind to yourselves right now. I would say be, be gentle with yourselves because we're still going through a very difficult time and self-kindness when we have more self-kindness for ourselves and we can affirm ourselves, we have so much more bandwidth to give to others. And I would encourage you to give great voice to yourself, to be really, really, really loving to yourselves right now. And then take that passion and that affirmation and go out and be your best selves and take on the world, live your dreams. You all matter. Your voice matters. Your stories matter. And your voice deserves to be heard. I truly, truly could not have said it better myself. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 55 of Vision Con Live. Thank you guys so much for watching. I, of course, am your host, Zach Wilson, but much more importantly, this has been my very special guest, Tasia Valenza. Make sure to check out all the links down in the description below. And until next time, guys, always remember that life's better when you have friends to share it with.